What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time to go over the biggest risers and followers in ADP over the last week. We finally have camps opening up. So from this point on, the biggest movement every week in both directions, risers and followers, will be related to camp news and not just like videos and podcasts posted by people, which is fantastic. So we'll start off with the biggest risers this week. And number one is obviously Julio Jones with Russell Gage being the fourth biggest follower. As of right now, Julio's ADP is the early 14th round. And in the like four to five drafts that I have been a part of since the news dropped that he was, of course, joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he's gone anywhere from the 10th to the 13th round. So that 14th round ADP is still accounting for some time where he was not on a team He's going to go in that 10th to 13th round range right now if you're doing a draft. So he's extremely likely to make the list next week. I don't honestly know where his final ADP is going to end up. It probably does depend on what reports come out, how he looks in camp, how he looks in the preseason. And we just really can't know that at this point. Uh, I gave my take on the Bucks offense during the Tuesday night live stream. Uh, and the news kind of broke a few hours before that, so I had a little bit of time to go over the projections, see what they were. But for those of you who missed that, Julio Jones is still Julio Jones. And while he performed poorly while playing through injuries last season, that was the first year of his career where he wasn't elite. And even like a, a 70% Julio Jones or someone who is basically if he's 70% of what his old self was, that is still better than most wide receivers. Once Godwin is a full go, which seems like it'll be relatively early in the season, if not week one. He and Evans are going to effectively be full-time wide receivers. And then I expect that third wide receiver spot to be a rotation between Julio, between Russell Gage, with also having snaps where they have four wide receivers on the field all at the same time. And this is a team that's going to throw the ball a ton. So it's different from other teams rotating in that third wide receiver, never really targeting them. That third wide receiver is going to get plenty of targets, and they're going to throw at such a high rate that even if Julio is not on the field more than like 60% of snaps, he'll still be very involved in the offense. And when he's out there, he's going to have a really high target share. So I think the public is going to be a little bit back on Julio compared to where they should be. But again, we're trying to predict the future with this thing. If really, really positive reports start coming out, uh, you know, if people around the industry, this is one that could get hyped up around the industry as people start talking him up. We could see him skyrocket in ADP. I think right now uh, I like my ranking on him. So if we just go through the Buccaneers offense after the news, my half PPR rankings are Evans as a wide receiver, nine, Godwin at 26, Russell Gage at 41, and then Julio at 50, overall ranking 108. And then that's in the 12 team league, at least that's the last pick in the ninth round, but that could change. Again, it kind of really depends on what reports we're kind of seeing at that point. Obviously, he's a risk, right? He's an older wide receiver now, he's changing teams, but he walks into an inarguably top three passing offense, an offense that's missing production from both Gronk and Antonio Brown. I, it's a really, really good situation for him to walk into. So. I think his ADP should be even higher than it is right now. As to Russell Gage, we'll see where he ends up. Uh, I thought people were going to overreact a lot and really crater his ADP. And while in those like four to five drafts, I have not yet gotten him. I think it's still possible he can fall to where I now have him ranked. So I have him ranked behind ADP. He's only dropped like half a round. I expect that to happen even more. I think it's going to be slowly people taking him later and later. Maybe we see him drop another half round in the next week. But I do think it'll get to the point where he's just like a neutral value in the rankings. And it'll really just depend on your particular draft if he falls or doesn't. But again, in the four to five drafts that I've done since the news dropped, I have not gotten Russell Gage and I have gotten Julio Jones. Aside from the Bucks, uh, other risers, the biggest one is Isaiah McKenzie. Though he's only risen into like the late 16th round. So he's risen a lot, but it's from like, you know, the last pick in the draft into the 16th. And I can't imagine there's any scenario where he rises past like, maybe, maybe he can get into the 14th, but I don't, I don't even think that's likely. I think that's probably his ceilings make it into the 14th round. 
unless they just like confirm he's won the slot job, which I don't think they're going to do because I don't think they want anyone to be like a full-time slot receiver. I think he's still going to rotate with Crowder, rotate with Shakir. And so I just, I don't see a scenario rises and towards like, oh no, he's going like the ninth round now. I think, you know, the 14th round is probably his ceiling for ADP. Uh, but basically it's because he's having a fantastic camp. It seems like he's winning the job over Crowder, uh, definitely over Shakir because I mean, these are like the first few days they've had him and can't be still a rookie. Uh, he wasn't like a first, second round pick or anything. And so they're still going to rotate these guys in. But it seems like right now that McKenzie is kind of leading that competition. Uh, I want to caution a little bit, though. I mean, he's gotten hype before. He's had really good games before in season. And consistency is just not been his thing as far as like involvement in the offense. I think he's been a really good receiver in the past, and I think he is a really good receiver this season. He's showing that he is in camp, but that doesn't mean they're going to give him more than like two, three, maybe four targets a week. And given his role, it's like in a redraft league, I get the rise on underdog in a redraft league. It's still pretty unlikely you're ever actually starting him. So I get the hype. I get it's exciting having, you know, an up and coming receiver on Buffalo, but let's not overreact. They're still going to rotate other guys in. And so he's a fine pick but he's not like some exceptional pick to where we need to start taking him in the single digit rounds. Uh, James Robinson is up a little over half a round now going in the early 14th round. Meanwhile, Etienne has honestly barely seen his ADP drop, which surprises me because in those drafts I've done uh, over this last week, I have seen him fall in like two to three of them. One time I almost got him in like, I don't remember exactly what the ADP was, but it was around like 50s to 60 for ADP he almost fell all the way to there and I was just like shocked that that was happening but again ADP wise he, he's like barely actually fallen so maybe it was just in my draft that's what happened to happen um but yeah I mean Robinson avoided the pup which is obviously great news for him and while you know he's only doing like at least as of recording this uh, you guys know two days beforehand so this is around noon on Thursday I'm recording it He's still doing sideline work, so he's not out there in like 7-on-7s, seven 11-on-11s, seven, 11 11, stuff like that. But it's phenomenal news for his recovery that he's even not just avoiding the pup, that he's on the sideline doing these drills. He is running. Again, I don't know exactly what his medical clearance is, but he's running. He's doing some of his drills. So you have to think he's on track to play in week one. Uh, that doesn't mean he's going to have, you know, the most workload of the season in week one. They might still ramp him up, and it doesn't mean he's going to look good, but he's probably going to be out there. So unless he suffers a setback, I would expect him to be there. That's why the ADP is rising. Um, I think I still have him as a relatively decent value. I want to say off the top of my head, he's in like in most formats, it depends on scoring format. Uh, he's in like the low 40s for running back ADPs uh, and his like overall ADP is not that high. So I think he's still like a good round um, value in the ranking. So still continue to draft him. But don't come off of Etienne too much. Um, I have shifted a decent chunk of the carries over from Etienne to James Robinson, but even doing that, like carries aren't like an overly valuable thing in fantasy. It's really the receptions that we like for Etienne. And I didn't take any of those away because we're still pretty sure they're going to be featuring him in the receiving game. So right now what I have for the projection is um, just looking at these two, like obviously other running backs going to mix in. They'll give Kurt carries. They'll give LaVisca carries if they keep LaVisca on the team. Uh, but just looking at, you know, Robinson and Etienne, I have it as a 55 45 split in favor of Etienne right now, just between those two players. Overall is 31% of the carries for Robinson, 37% for Etienne. And I actually gave, um, a higher touchdown share I want to say it was around 38 percent to James Robinson so I have more total rushing volume going to Travis Etienne but more touchdowns going to Robinson because I think it's more likely they kind of bring him in as their goal line back I don't really think Travis is ever going to be um, a high touchdown score on the ground even though he's going to have some through the air and again given those like numbers it's Mid to low end running back two, still for Travis Etienne, still drafting him. And then Robinson, still a good pick late in like the low 40s for running backs. Nico Collins, next biggest rise that we care about. He's up about half a round into the 13th after the report that John Mechie has leukemia. He's going to miss the rest of the season. Seems like he's going to be absolutely fine. Probably play next season, but this season is done for him. And 
honestly, like I'm still not over the moon on Colin's talent, but you can't deny that the wide receiver room is now like extremely thin behind Cooks. It already was thin before, but now the only competition is Chris Conley, Chris Moore, Philip Dorsett, like unless they're the team that brings in Will Fuller, which I guess is a possibility, but unless that happens, like who does this team have to throw to? So obviously Brandon Cooks is going to be a really good pick this season, but Collins kind of has to be okay. And so he's still a relatively decent value. I moved him up to the wide receiver 60. It now does make him a value at his current ADP, which is a little bit later than that. He's a wide receiver too. And even though I don't think he's a fantastic talent and I don't think this passing offense, like, well, I like Davis Mills, but I don't think they're like some amazing passing attack. He's number two, you know, and going as like the, I think he's like 70th by ADP, uh, even rising, like he needs to go up even more. Uh, the only other riser really worth going over is Ramondre Stevenson up four spots now being taken as the 34th running back off boards. Uh, you guys know I'm very high on Stevenson's talent. Uh, I was last season. I thought that they should have given him even more work last year. I honestly think he's better than Damian Harris. So hopefully his ADP doesn't rise too much in drafts. He's definitely the type of player that could if there's really nice clips of him in camp. If in the preseason, you know, he just rumbles in for multiple scores. Like he's just the type of player that could see a rise in ADP. Um, but yeah, hopefully it doesn't go up too much. I still have him at 32, a slight value again, ADP. 34 now and he also goes in a, a portion of the draft that's like you know pretty common for you to kind of get that like third or fourth running back you've already probably locked up ones you feel really good about in the early rounds of the draft and he's kind of right at like the end of the ones you feel comfortable with as you start getting into the running backs like you know 37 to 40 now we're taking pure backups pure pass catching specialists guys that don't have as much upside and so he's right at the end of that tier and so i think he's a, a very quality pick even his new adp Onto the followers, where the news is definitely much less exciting. Uh, all the top four are based on news we already covered. So that's Brait, Mechie, Crowder, and Russell Gage. So we don't need to explain why they fell even more. Uh, Fuller, I guess you could say Brait. One last thing on Brait is they also got Rudolph. So not only did they bring in another wide receiver that'll take targets away and potential touchdowns away, they brought in Rudolph. Like that's why Brait's going down, but you guys weren't drafting him to begin with. Uh, but Fuller is down half a round since he hasn't signed with anyone yet, but just like with Julio, his ADP is obviously going to skyrocket whenever he does. Um, I do think he's going to sign, but I mean, we haven't heard from Will Fuller in like, what, like a year? I mean, we've heard absolutely nothing, so I have no idea what his situation is, but if he signs somewhere, he's going to go up. Uh, Sammy Watkins is down five spots, which I do not agree with, and I actually drafted him. I haven't been drafting him at all this summer, but... I was in like 200 on drafts recently where he was just cratering. I got him in like, you know, basically the last round. Like, yeah, I understand that he's like a, you know, not the safest pick in the world, but his injury is super minor. Maybe when you're listening to this, he's already returned to practice. Like he's going to return to practice very soon. If anything, it's Christian Watson that you need to be concerned with. His injury um, is a little bit more of one that like we need to monitor when exactly he's going to be back. But Watkins should be back relatively soon. Um, realistically, for both of these guys, it's just that like Allen Robinson is just, you know, further securing that role as the clear number one wide receiver. But Watson shouldn't be falling as much as he is. Like he, he was going like 30 spots behind ADP, and his ADP is dropping. Like I don't know, people are just completely avoiding him because of one injury. But he's gonna be back very soon. So draft him if he craters in your draft. Uh, Dobbins and Gus Edwards are both down a little bit since it's reported that both might not be good to go in week one. I think people are overreacting a tad to this one. I've seen multiple reports that Dobbins is extremely close to returning. So I would be pretty surprised if he wasn't out there in week one. I'm very curious how things are going to look come late August with these two. Are they both on the field clearly playing in week one or is it still kind of a question mark? I don't know what's going to happen, but again, the latest reports are Dobbins is relatively close. And if he's relatively close in late July to returning, I just have to think he's going to be out there, if not in week one, very early in the season. And so I don't think his ADP should be dropping as much as it is. And honestly, that's it for the, the biggest risers and fallers over the last week. I think we're getting a lot more movement in the next week. So I'll close out with a few notes uh, from the first few days of camps based on 
players getting positive reports that have not yet really seen an ADP bump, but should, and I expect to in the near future. Uh, remember, I record this on Thursdays for a Saturday morning upload. So this is based off news that happened Monday through, or I guess from the last week through uh, around noon Eastern on Thursday. We always knew that Devonta Parker would be the Patriots X receiver, but he has been used in camp pretty heavily and he's becoming a featured option in the red zone. I gave him a bump in his touchdown projection. I might increase his um, passing or I guess receiving projection soon. Uh, and he should be going earlier than the wide receiver 64 off board. So I expect him to go up soon. Uh, Wandell Robinson seems to be locked in as a day one starter. They are not only moving him around the formation a lot, they're using him in pre-snap motion, they're lining him up in the backfield, like he's very clearly going to be a weapon on this offense, and you know, it's pretty clear that he's just going to be heavily involved, and as the 82nd wide receiver by ADP, I mean, that is a complete joke, he is my most rostered player on underdog by a mile, I expect that to be the case when we get into week one as well. Uh, and then there have been reports that Allen Robinson has been fantastic so far. The organization loves him. They're moving him around the formation. They're just going to feature him as well. I don't think his ADP can skyrocket because he's already going relatively early, but it definitely should go up, and I think it will over the next week. So that is it for the biggest risers and fallers this last week. You can track ADP movement on my website for free, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. You can also find my rankings, projections, player notes, strategy articles, premium videos, team grade tool, and a whole lot more over there. Again, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. I'll be back tomorrow to go over my favorite underdog strategies, Monday for another episode of Mock Draft Monday, and then live Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern to answer any questions you guys have and do an underdog draft as well. That, my friends, is the end of this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.